The stage is set. Welcome to our coverage of day one of what is the fifth Nissan International Classic. We're at Dublin Airport for the start. The riders are assembling here, all 105 of them signing on behind me, or you'll find them inside in the departure lounge where they're taking breakfast, their final bite to eat, before setting out on the 111 mile journey that'll take them to Dundalk. The route sets off up the main road towards Belfast through Balbriggan and Drogheda, then inland to Slane, Knobber, Carrick Macross, on to Dundalk, and then out into the Cooley Peninsula where a long climb awaits them on the long woman's grave. Back into Dundalk for the street circuit to finish there this afternoon. This stage will tell us a lot about the 1989 Nissan. Let's now go and meet some of the riders. So Charles J. Hoy starts the fifth Nissan International Classic. 105 starters from 16 countries, 21 teams. From Holland, Ireland and Switzerland. Mexico, Belgium, France, West Germany, Denmark. Canada, the United States of America, Norway. England, Scotland, Australia, Spain and Italy they come. Seven Tour de France stage winners from 1989. Fifteen Tour de France stage winners in all. Classic winners, world champions, they're all here Phil. And as we said in that departure lounge, you really could stick a pin in perhaps 40 of the field anyway to realistically get a winner. Indeed, Jimmy. One or two riders on the back here with no race numbers. The boys of Dublin enjoying the spectacle as the field... ...eventually, perhaps. Well, the rolling on, and we're now in Dundalk. 73 miles covered, the big circuit of the peninsula to come. But more importantly, the third and final special sprint of the day's racing, and another three seconds bonus for the leading rider over the finishing line as they pass through on the way out for the final 25 miles. Let's remind ourselves of where those bonuses have gone today so far. The first hot spot going to Soren Lilholt. The second hot spot going to Russell Williams and coming up now the third hot spot. And when you see where they'll take this, it will be the place where the race itself will finish. Sweeping into the dock, past the old Magnet Cinema, the Adelphi on the left and into Clanbrassel Street. And look at the crowds in Clanbrassel Street and the race still has to go way out into the Cooley Peninsula before the finish. Who's in the race for this? Well, Russell Williams is up there again. Russell Williams going for another one. He's been chased hard here by Soren Lilholt. Red Dot, we saw on Herod speaking early on. Red Dot for the Lotto team on the left of the road there. Williams in the right tight with Lilholt. These men have both got bonuses today. Williams takes that one. That's six seconds for him on bonuses and five overall for Lilholt. They were the big two of the hots today and that's the last of the hot spots. John Russell Williams and a uh, word of congratulation I think there from Son Lil Holt and uh, the pain on the face there of Henrik Rodant who gets his second third place. Here we have a look at the replay. This is, a, this is an absolutely marvellous sprint. Williams is led out from a long way from the line, yet uh, Soren Lilholt, ex-junior world champion, challenging on the far right of him, wasn't making any progress at all, and Hendrik Bredant in third slot lost a couple of lengths when he realised it wasn't on. Russell Williams then, the leader on the road. Will he still be the leader when the stage finishes in Dundalk? They cross the big bridge at the Castletown River. They head out towards Ravensdale, Rock Marshall, Jenkinstown, or the Long Woman's Grave. And we'll be back shortly as the Nissan story of 89 unfolds. The Nissan is on the climb to the Long Woman's Grave, Jenkinstown Hill. Or as the locals probably know, part of this is the Magnetic Mountain. Tell me that, Phil, that if you park your car in a certain part of this, on the incline, it'll go in the opposite direction. <laughs> Jimmy, I knew you'd you know believe that. anything. <laughs> well, it's a nasty little climb, Jim. It's the first climb of the race uh, so far. It takes them up to just on a thousand feet. And of course, over the top, there is a strong wind blowing. And I know the views are stunning, but the riders will be more interested now about which men are turning out to be the strong men. Good steady climb, but one or two riders trying to take position at the front of the field. And if we catch a glimpse of the back, Jim, I think we'll see at least a dozen riders are now in trouble. They're pretty sad. The field are going out. They have three full circuits now to do of the tower before the big sprint. As they went past the old Carroll's factory there, at the top of Clanbrassel Street, it was Bernie Burns and Alan Piper who were the first 40, 50 miles.